Moody's cutting the credit rating of several smaller U.S. banks, putting some of them on credit rating watch. David Barnson with us this morning. You don't think that this, it, this, this credit downgrade watch, you don't think much to it? That's not the reason why the market's down this morning? Well, I'd point out that the NASDAQ futures are down just as much, if not more, than the Dow futures. And none of these things are NASDAQ issuers. These are very small regional banks. J.P. Morgan's flat on the day. Truist right now is about 16, 17 percent higher than it was just two months ago. I just think that these rating agencies are so overthought how late they are to the game. They're basically right now reporting March news, and it is the month of August. OK, so the, the downgrade question... The Moody's story is not the primary reason for the stock sell-off this morning. Definitely not. What is then? What I is think it? it's nothing more than the fact the market was up over 400 points yesterday. It was down last week. We're in a more volatile environment, up and down movements, because the market right now has had such a good earnings season. Now traders have to take a little money off the table. There's going to be up and down volatility. China slowing down. Does that hurt no, our market? That's a market story. And that's a sustainable okay. story, not a one or two day story. If, if China ends up trying to export their deflation to the world, like Japan did, like the United States has tried to do, that's a major economic story. One more. Italy has or wants to impose a 40% windfall tax on bank, quote, excess profits. Is that a negative for Wall Street? Do they have banks that have profits? Well, good question. That was <laughs> facetious and sarcastic. It's sort of facetious. I mean, the European banking system has been a disaster for over 10 years, but that would be a very, very bad thing for Europe. And so, yeah, probably is something they will do. The okay. banks there are at the beck and call of the government, uh, right? That's a so. theme. And it kind of feels like that sometimes here. It's dramatic. OK, let's move on. Uh, with us uh, for this hour, that's you, by the way. Thank you very much indeed. Ron DeSantis has a warning for Republicans about the upcoming election. Uh, what is the warning, Lauren? It was an interview with uh, NBC, and Ron DeSantis said Trump lost. He said it very clearly. Trump lost 2020. And if the country keeps focusing on Trump and his legal woes, Republicans will lose again in 24. Trump will be in court what campaigning. You, uh, it, Barnson here is dying to get into this. What do you got to say? Uh, in 2015 and 16, President Trump was running at the time based on grievances that, for right or for wrong, he tapped in with the grievances of certain American people. He right now is campaigning on his grievances. And I think that Governor DeSantis is right that there is less uh, emotion for what is happening to him than there would be for what's happening to the American people. You have to focus on President Biden's policies and a forward vision for America. And, Stuart, I've heard you say the same thing over the years. I have indeed over the years. Yes, many, many years. <laughs> David, thank you very much. Okay, I, I have to move on, David, because I have David Barnson with me, and he is a very much a dividend guy. So let's see what Mr. Barnson has to say about a 64% dividend on TSLY. You're laughing. Yeah, I wrote a book, as you know, called There's No Free Lunch. You and did. one of the most important rules for investors to remember when it comes to investing is there's no free lunch. There's no free 64%. The, the premiums you're getting, right, those calls within this TSLY, they can go down dramatically right now. Now they've been big income, they can go away. But the stock has gone from 21 to 13 to 18 to 13 three or four times in the last few months. So it's 40 or 50 percent volatility. There is absolutely no such thing as a 64 percent dividend on God's green earth that is safe and protected. And investors have got to know that. I think we've, well, <laughs> we've got an interesting debate going here. That's what we've got. TSLY, 64 percent, yes or no. All right, <laughs> my favorite, Beyond Meat. Huge decline, still down Whoa. 20%. Tell me more. U.S. sales fell 40%. High inflation. Beyond Meat is expensive, pushing shoppers to make decisions. What kind of protein are you going to pick? Real meat, as in pork prices, are getting cheaper. Overall, in the quarter, Beyond Meat revenue fell 30% to $102 million. Uh, Bonson, again, is laughing up a storm right next to me. What do you got on Beyond Meat? Their entire revenue as a company is about what the McDonald's on 6th Avenue did yesterday. <laughs> um, I, I, this is a fad. The stock was at 160. It's now at 12. It is going to zero. They blow Whoa. money up. $257 million of losses a quarter. Uh, the, I never see statistics like this of how 
how much they're eroding, the more they grow, the more they lose. Uh, I'm telling you, this thing has been a disaster. But David, they're saving the planet. Come on, man. Well, I, you can argue McDonald's is as well for some for some people. <laughs> yeah, for some people. Palantir. Uh, down 7%. I thought they had a good report. To set David up here, the positive news, <laughs> yeah. I thought the stock might have turned and been higher on this. The board approved their first ever $1 billion share buyback. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's helpful, but not now. Not today. <laughs> I think oh, I think they'd uh, rather buy back shares at 16 than, that's uh, true. That's than right. at 20. But you just be very careful of people using AI language for marketing when there isn't a real AI business. Got it. One of the main reasons we have David Barnes on the show so regularly is that A, he's a pretty good financial analyst, and B, he brings with us some dividend plays, some of which I've taken myself and done money with or got money from. First off, Lamar advertising. I always want to bring one company when I'm on with you that has had some weakness. And because you want contrarian, you know, stocks that maybe are at a good value. Lamar had a little decline in revenues last week and the stock dropped. But this is billboard advertising by far yes. the largest in the country. You're going into political ad season next year. Generally a good season for billboards. 5.8% dividend yield. 5.8% at $88 yeah. a share. And very solid and they oh, grow it okay. year over year. Fine. I'll take that. Amgen, biological. Company. Amgen then, on the other hand, had great numbers last week. 9% revenue growth. The stock is up quite a bit. They had no less than nine drugs last quarter have all-time highs in revenues. Nine drugs set their uh, all-time record in terms of gross sales. Amgen's really been a great dividend grower for us. What did they pay at 2.6%? Uh, Amgen's at 3.5%. Not bad. Gilead Sciences. Gilead's at closer to 4%, about 3.9. By far the best HIV treatment in the world. Now they're really getting into oncology, doing great things with cancer. They think oncology will be 30% of their business by the end of the decade. Got it. David Barnson, thanks. Excellent pick. David Barnson is still with me. What do you think of Biden's uh, green policy? Well, I agree with everything Larry said, and I've been big on this natural gas thing for some time. To reclassify that as a clean fuel would uh, do a world of good. And I also think our ability to export liquefied natural gas, we only have seven terminals built in the country that can export. This is not just an environmentally superior policy, but for economic growth, the amount of jobs, well-paying jobs, Absolutely. for blue-collar people don't necessarily have college degrees that can get good six-figure jobs yeah. to help build these terminals to export gas, then it has a geo political benefit. We don't have to worry about Putin and Russia and Middle Eastern enemies when we are exporting gas. It drives me nuts that in New York State, underground, under the ground, in New York State, there is enough natural yeah. gas to fuel the world. In, in, the in world. New York State and California, and both of those states are the most stringent at keeping it from happening. And, and both of it. those states are the states I call home. So what does that say about me? You, mean you should move. <laughs> <laughs> Bonson, you're all right. Thanks very much indeed, David. I just want to thank David uh, for joining us for the entire hour. It's been you, fun. Had, you had a lot of uh, injection points there, didn't you? Well, I thought some of them were important. So. You didn't like Beyond Meat. He's going to zero. You yeah. got that? And you didn't think much of that company, that, uh, not the, the TSLY with a 64% dividend? Yeah, I, I don't think highly of people that believe there's an easy way to go, you know, get these huge gains. Investors have to understand risk. You're in an angry mood this morning, aren't you? I'm in a very positive mood this morning. What are you going to go buy this morning? Uh, we're going to continue buying these Amgens, Gileads, these dividend growers. Uh, we're long-term investors in companies that grow cash flow for a long, long time. Okay. Thanks for being with us, David. Always a pleasure. Thank you, sir.